Good evening to all the viewers who are watching live and will be watching on a recorded version. I hope you enjoyed our last CME and I hope you do this too. And we have an interesting topic. So without okay. wasting any more time, let's just start with our 37th round on time. Good evening, sir, and good evening, all our viewers. Good evening, sir, and good evening, all our viewers across the globe. Uh, slowly but steadily and in a progressive way, we are now on the 73rd episode of our online continuous medical education program organized by National Institute of Homeopathy Alumni Association. And tonight we have with us our president, respected Dr. Dev Naran Kalyani, sir, who is our co-host again after so many episodes. Welcome back, sir, as our host again. Uh, so, with your permission, uh, let us call on uh, our inaugurator tonight for the 73rd CME. Sure, sure. Please call him. And uh, we are happy to have a set of renowned personalities across the country. Our Sir, Dr. The Department of National Medical, Medical College and Hospital will now be live CME. Over to you, Dr. Fisher. Good evening. Good evening, the viewers. Good evening, sir. Dr. Kollan is here, my teacher, and my senior brother, Vidud Mukherjee. Uh, thank you all. Um, welcome all the learned audiences of this 73rd online CME program. Uh, conducted by our NIH Alumni Association. Uh, such a platform, it is a, such a platform where the speaker get opportunity to share their views to others. Myself, Dr. Kishore Kumar Naskar, uh, one of the proud alumni of, uh, uh, alumni of NIH. I want to introduce two great personality in our present homeopathic world. One professor, Dr. L.K. Nanda said, uh, and everybody know him as a great teacher of Metro America and one of my most respected gurus. And he's the former principal of uh, AC Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital Bhubaneswar, one of the prestigious homeopathic institute of India. And another personality, most respected, the principal of another prestigious institute and the oldest homeopathic institute at present in the world, the Calcutta Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, his professor, Dr. Roju Chattopadhyay. That today's topic is a very interesting topic. Science of homeopathy lies in the art of application of clinical medicine. And the honorable speaker is Professor Dr. Rajut Chattopadhyay. In our homeopathy, there is no set specifics in our homeopathy. We know. But the successful homeopathic prescription based on this specific. And that is the individualistic specifics. If we look back, the homeopathic practice was started with the very few poisoning recorded symptoms of the medicines. Then Hanneman thought for the proving and then based on the proving symptoms and followed by the symptomatology of all three sources 
proving, poisoning, and followed by the clinical observations of different five years. So symptoms collected from different group of the provers, different clinical observations, different poisoning sources build a combined specific area of a particular drug. There are different concepts on these applications based on mental and physical totality or sometimes based on pathological point of view on needs. According to Dr. Kent, prescribed medicine must cover the symptoms of the patient as well as the pathognomonic symptoms of the disease. The symptoms of the patient, that is the individualistic, physical, and mental characteristic symptoms. And the pathognomonic symptoms, it is not only the pathological sphere of such nosological disease, but the unique association of different background pathologies with this unique modalities of their association. This association is or are also the specific for that particular medicine. So now we are inviting our learned speaker, Professor Dr. Rajut Chattopadhyay. Please start your program, sir. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kishore. And I welcome you all. Respected Dr. Uh, Nanda sir is here. My regards to very esteemed professor, learned professor, Dr. Nanda of Matrimatica. He was also my teacher uh, uh, at uh, examiner of post-graduation at NIH. I feel proud to be uh, an alumni of National Institute of Homeopathy, the prestigious Institute of uh, homeopathy in India uh, and uh, also uh, I, I feel acknowledged to the organizers especially to Dr. Kollani, Dr. Bidhu, Dr. Polo and all others who are uh, the pioneers of this institute, all the alumni institute. They have been taking a lot of pain to continue this uh, CME. We can see that this is the live 73rd uh, CME continuous. Uh, there are so many name fame attached with this NIH Alumni Association. I cannot take the name of all. I can remember a few of Dr. Nayak, Dr. Ishwardas, all others. My all regards to all esteemed seniors. My uh, regards to all seniors and love to all colleagues and professionals and juniors of this association. So uh, it's on the academic platform. Today's seminar is on the basis of the integrated medicine and clinical medicine. Also, the science of homeopathy lies in the art of application of medicine. That is the topic. That is the science of homeopathy because it is whenever it comes to homeopathy, the name of science comes with this, that whether the scientificity lies behind it or not, that is when we were student, there was that uh, difficult scenario at that time. The scientificity of the homeopathy was challenged. Till that it is challenged, but Still now, we have a lot of evidences. We have a lot of evidences from academic point of view, from our practice, clinical practice. It is our huge database. The practice, uh, the homeopathic professionals, they usually cured so many cases and with a lot of evidences. So the data is regarding the cured cases in the field, homeopathic field, we have no problem. In the homeopathic research, we have different type of research. We have the research in uh, fundamental type we have the research in clinical level we have the different different field a lot of data also we have a very central council for research in homeopathy since long it has been doing a great job to uplift uh, the standard of research and uh, recently in the last since last five six years or seven years is doing a great job and so the art of prescription whenever it comes to practice homeopathy it comes to the organ of medicine, it comes to the Metro Medica. Uh, we think that homeopathy is lagging behind the science. Homeopathy, there is no synchronicity with the science. It is only the artistic part. But we forget that the practice of medicine part, the clinical art of medicine, it is it is it is it is lies it lies on 
basically on the art of its application. So whenever anyone can ask any question regarding the clinical medicine, what is clinical medicine? The clinical medicine is not only the evidence-based medicine. Till date, we, we can say that it is evidence-based medicine. Previously, it was clinical medicine, practice of, practice of medicine. But it is typically maybe evidence-based medicine. But we should not forget that these evidence comes from the art of application of medicine in the clinical field. And that art of application of clinical field start from the entering of the patient in the OPTs, RPTs, or in the uh, private chambers, clinics. So it starts from the case taking. So art of prescription, the science of it in this, my today's presentation, I will I will go to the different part. That, that is, it is not only based on science, it is not only based on clinical cases or not only based on organ of medicine like that. It is a holistic approach, integrated approach. You can, uh, you, if uh, you may agree or may not agree with my conception, but what uh, since last 27 years in the profession, what we have learned, what we have perceived, uh, and with the uh, guidance from the seniors and from the references of the reach, the source books, what we have perceived, that I want to share with you. So the science of homeopathy lies in the art of uh, in the art of application of medicine. So first of all, we may think of medicine in changing context. Medicine in changing context it means it means medicine practice of medicine. It is now not only in clinical medicine. It is it not only confines it only clinical part. It is now evidence-based medicine. And just after COVID phase, we have gone through a tremendous change in the perception of clinical medicine. What clinical medicine we have gone through in the very remote past that we have been oblivion since last 10 years. But these COVID era, these post-COVID phase or during COVID phase, that is remembering our that old clinical medicine, that art of clinical medicine. So intentionally i put this comment that medicine in changing context because because medicine is now it is already it is in holistic domain the holistic concept is not only for homeopathy only not only confined to homeopathy holistic concept driven in medicine and medicine in changing context from the etiological point of view from the prevalence point of view from the changing uh, symptomatology point of view even uh, even from the uh sequely the presentation of sequely presentation of complication all these point of view or in multiple events medicine in changing context this is the right time to re-establish homeopathic system of medicine through its holistic operative procedure based on nature because we 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 feel proud to say that homeopathy is based on nature homeopathy is based on the comprehensive principles of nature or natural medicine but there are so many natural medicines so many natural therapeutic system and homeopathy we, we can establish homeopathy as one of the best system of medicine therapeutic system of medicine based on nature all of its cardinal principles like theory of vital force to minimum dose ought to be accepted by the society due to its eternal truth all of which are verified again and again during this pandemic phase, what I was talking just regarding the pandemic phase. So what we have said, what we have said that we have to ultimately, we have to give emphasis on the health, on the healthy lifestyle, on your sleeping, eight hours sleep, good balanced diets and everything, whatever may cause, may affect your health that we should take care of. So to give, most important to your healthy health to your health this is the most important part whatever may be the theory of vital force whatever in the organ of medicine maybe of six and nine in the healthy condition of man the spiritual vital force the dynamics i am not talking about the very strong strong words of organ of medicine or homeopathic philosophy but very lucidly if we think that the concept of vital force it is related to life principle it is concept to the life the positive health the very basic concept of vital force it is now 
the most important part in clinical medicine that we have to take care of so who one is healthy and who who is healthy and who is diseased that we have to know that we have to perceive whether we are all diseased from from any uh, mechanical point of view from dynamic point of view or from any other part whether we are diseased or not that is the most important part whenever we will be uh, taking case any any taking case of any chronic cases medical practice and the healthcare system both are built on the foundation of the physician patient relationship which is the strong bonding of homeopathic system of medicine because nowadays we, we can think that the doctor patient relationship still is prevailing in homeopathic system of medicine in comparison to all other system of medicine what type of time we give during case taking which is most important part of homeopathic uh, system of medicine it is the essential one it is the first one and it is the essential one and i think without the real case taking not a single case even maybe of acute it is must for chronic but even it is of acute if we don't give time to the patient if we don't perceive the condition of the patient from clinical medicine and our homeopathic concept point of view then we, sh we should not justice we should not uh, give justice to the patient because they are calling they are they are they are, they, are, they, are, they usually uh, go to homeopathic doctor for uh, a conception of holistic concept by root from the root the disease will be uprooted like this concept it prevails in the society that homeopathic doctors there are no side effect they treat holistically and the, all the disease uprooted from the very, very deep these are the very prevailing concept so the case taking part is the very first fundamental part of homeopathic system of medicine and we think that this is the superior this is the most important part of our system and now it is also it is not only it is since beginning of clinical medicine case taking part is one of the most important part in the name of evidence based medicine you cannot deny the real take, case taking in clinical medicine so the physician patient relationship nowadays modern medicine is thinking of family medicine concept they are now talking about the doctor patient relationship they are now showing the how a doctor will behave through the management people it is now with the learning procedures in the syllabus education syllabus but i think being a homeopath we are far superior in this aspect that we know how to behave with the patient we know how we should be tactful in taking the case how we should take care of all bringing out all the past events of the patient because we have to make the totality with the vast expenses of knowledge available students of healthcare and practice management are encouraged to develop lifelong learning skills these we have to develop that that is the motto of this cme i think this is it is not only that to get the degree of bhms or passing md or getting one service or doing phd our lifelong learning skill should prevail and it is very 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 much uh, applicable to clinical medicine part and as well as in homeopathic practice of medicine homeopathy not only it is the end one of organon of medicine with the first edition to last edition first to six it is it not only ends with the metrimedy the pura and all the source books but the applications of organon of medicine the application of metrimedica time to time changes with the scenario with the society with the accessory circumstances that we have to learn through the life only experience can be a good teacher of you whenever because the field is changing so rapidly that the need for continuous updating of knowledge and skills are very very essential very essential so we have to we have to go for we have to we have to uh, go for this one we have to go for this one in very particular manner of this lifelong learning skills because in clinical medicine everything is changing everything the part of if we think of any disease of respiratory system to cardiovascular system to the nervous system everything previously it was called cardiovascular cva cardiovascular accident now it is called stroke previously it is called that uh, of uh, pneumonia 
it is only patchy inflammation of the lung parenchyma now it is told it is the patchy inflammation of lung parenchyma radiologically evidence by the homogeneous opacity it becomes evidence based medicine so with the time the clinical medicine will change and the concept of homeopathy how it will adopt this change and how that will be applied to patient to patient individually that is the lifelong learning skills to a homeopath that we should have to take care of so art of clinical medicine what is what is the art of clinical medicine the first part the, this point is not in this light but we must of that what is to be cured in the disease this is the very important part what whether whether the patient in, is in what stage i am not only talking about the pathological stage definitely pathological stage in which stage because it is evidence based medicine from the investigations we can know that what at the in which stage patient is right now but in which dynamic pathology behind the case the cause of the cause these are the very important part the constitution of the patient the typical constitution the typical observation the keen observations can only bring out all the odds in the patient in the pqrs we usually we uh, run for pqrs peculiar queer rare symptoms striking rare individual uncommon symptoms but these uncommonness also in the diagnosis of the clinical medicine is also important part because one man individual varies so the same disease may prevail in one part and prevail in another part that maybe it is diagnosed by some other topics because in all disease like pneumonia in or say for example in any type of arthritis the all the symptoms of arthritis cannot be present in one patient so it is it is depending on the individual constitution on which constitution the which symptom will appear it is depending on the geographical areas it is depending on all the modalities it is depending on the environmental factors epigenetics lots of etc etc so so for this keen observation may vary from one country to one country even from one state to one state we have to take care of sound senses sound senses are it is i am talking about art of clinical medicine i am not talking about organ of medicine right now but we should know that organ and the literally meaning it is the instrument so by this instrument we can learn the medicine in the real way as it is so it is organ is not meant for only homeopaths organ is meant for the man of medicine so through this instrument we can investigate with this instrument the medicine part the application of medicine in the artistic way the sound senses these are these artistic application already prevail in the clinical medicine just by hearing some murmurs even we know the murmurs we know that even a, any extra added extra adventitious sound apart from the classical heart sound is called murmur but within these murmurs there are typical variations even with the respiratory uh, breath sounds uh, the vesicular breath sound the typical bronchovascular breath sounds tubular breath sound there are variations within the bronchial breath sounds even within the crepitations there are coarse crepitations fine crepitations within the coarse crepitations there are variations the very experienced ear with the stethoscope can diagnose just by hearing the very coarse crepitation it is the crepitation of tuberculosis it is the crepitation of cox pulmonary cox chronic tuberculosis or it is the crepitations of pericardial friction sound it is the pericarditis it is the pericardial pleural rub or pericardial rub so the by just by hearing by smelling by smelling sweetness by smelling acetone smelling we can diagnose we can think of diabetes mellitus by seeing the bronching of the skin we can think of the patient may have the creatinine level very high chronic renal failure just by seeing it is not only by seeing the very uh, darkness and additions this is only by seeing the pallor by seeing the malar flashes of mitral stenosis even the mitral stenosis like grave valvular disease of cardiovascular system can be just by observation by seeing we can think of but it will give clues these are the parts of clinical medicine the artistic part the science lies behind it the first part whenever we we have we have very high bilirubin level there there may be high bilirubin level but the first part the pre ictenic phase there may be disgust of smoke 
like we, I, we know that these are the symptoms found in arsenic, colchicum, etc. The disgust of smoke, anything, the, even the cigarette smokers, they not they avoid the cigarette smoking. But if you go through the pathology, you cannot find at that time the high bilirubin level. It will come later on. But the very first part, whenever we are observing the patient in the very initial phases, just by hearing, by smelling, by seeing, observing, by touching, by touching the very cold, clammy person with the uh, perspiration, with the chest pain, it may not be simple angina pectoris. It may be the next stage, the very fatal stage of myocardial infection, whenever there is so much sweating is there with the chest pain. So even the touching, the uh, skin, the uh, temperature, temperature of the patient by touching, we can think of many clues of many disease. So the perception, whether the patient is telling you everything, patient is telling you all the things, but your perception, what your perception is telling that whatever the patient is telling that all are bogus. Patient is something, something hiding from you. So you have to bring out all those things. These are the art of your in case taking. These are the art in behind behind the it is it, it it cannot be said scientifically and it cannot be managed by the management team but this is the typical art which is the typical part of clinical medicine which will prevail lifelong and i think that the if the practice of medicine has to remain live then the artistic part of this case taking part should prevail throughout the clinical medicine because it it if it is an oblivion the artistic part will be of oblivion if your only basis, your only diagnosing cases on the basis of your evidence based without thinking of the artistic application of your clinical eyes, then the practice of medicine will not survive. This is my apprehension. You may or may not agree. And the common senses, this is a very important part. The common senses, there are very many things with the, the disease, the medicine may not require you may give the moral remedy. Only counseling is required. But before the concept of this counseling, our concept of this moral remedy, our concept of perception, what is to be cured in the disease, whether the patient require medicine or not, this concept prevailed from 1810, even if I am not wrong, if from 1805 and 6, medicine of experience. Even before that, the writings of Hanneman, even before that, the writings of the Greek myths, uh, it is there. So observation, the common senses related to practice of medicine, these are very important. These are very important part which we should not think that we are now evidence-based medicine. So we have don't care. Only we can make write the investigations. We can advise the investigations. So the diagnosis can be there, and I will prescribe medicine. No, clinical medicine not require not require these from any clinical. A medicine doctor it may be homeopath it may be modern man of modern medicine so say for example uh, something uh, uh, from on that uh, theoretical part what causes joint pain there are very many factors arthritis related causes there may be osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis spondyloarthritis viral arthritis but these are the all arthritis related causes so osteoarthritis is you know the degenerative joint disorders it it is not only when i was student it usually said that it is a degenerative joint of uh, joint disorders and is usually very common in the agent but right now we have been observing that it is not only the disease of the agent even it can it comes after 30 with the 40 so third decade fourth decade also osteoarthritis degeneration based on the uh, lifestyles of the patient these are the lifestyles and the constitution and the miasmatic dyspraxias from our point of view, from their point of view, from a scientific point of view, the genomic factors, or the epigenetics, these are the parts of um, occupation, osteoarthritis, the rheumatoid arthritis. Typically, typically autoimmune disorders, and do we know the autoimmune disorders, the emotion plays an important role behind the autoimmune disorders, also multiple druggings. Uh, very massive druggings and there are so many factors now I will show one or two slides uh, the very recent uh, research articles behind the rheumatoid arthritis nowadays it is telling that even uh, chronic smokers they are very predisposed to rheumatoid arthritis the very recent findings it was not in the past spondyloarthritis another one 
even we cannot differentiate in very many cases the very young homeopaths or young clinicians they are in a fix that whether the uh, case is of rheumatoid arthritis or whether the case is of spondyloarthritis because seronegative spondyloarthritis this is ESSA nowadays it is very very uh, common thing and usually it is like our organ and concept very uh, one sided disease it will give only one two but it's only stiffness is there only pain is there persisting is there and there nothing coming in your investigations it may come very late but the patient is giving you symptom and patient is coming to you that no doctor i have no relief so spondyloarthritis we have to take care of and the viral arthritis another thing these viral arthritis nowadays it is now a uh, very huge one uh, huge uh, it is now we are in the um, chambers in the opds we are observing we have been observing the viral arthritis in the post covid phases so these are the very common thing but what is very strange right now that is the causes unrelated to arthritis but giving you the feeling of that uh, you are in a fix that whether it is way ra uh, ssa or anything fibromyalgia very very all over the world post covid phase it was very common in the developed countries of fibromyalgia it is very much related to your mental status your lifestyles etc etc but fibromyalgia now it is becoming the very uh, i can say it is endemic also in very many places in the upper uh, socio economical strat uh, level the fibromyalgia is very very important one another one hemarthrosis it is not very common in related to fibromyalgia hypothyroidism hypothyroidism whenever you are giving medicine and it is not not working and the patient is complaining of pain and pain and pain so during diagnosis you must think of also serum tsa it's the hypothyroidism because it is, it gives lot of pain the hypothyroidism nowadays it is also an increase in the past when in our metro medica in the source books usually at that time hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis was very common so you can get the uh, very many symptoms of thyrotoxicosis hyperthyroidism but since last 20 years or maybe more than that 25 years 30 years the hypothyroidism is in rise and last 5 to 10 years it is abrupt rise in hypothyroidism it may be related to multiple factors our food habits our lifestyles etc uh, but we should take care of because it is related to your arthritis and last one depression i can remember first when i was student at nih during my pg tenure in the first year i with utter surprise i observed in one of lancets uh, at that time uh, the current edition of lancet was only available at nih so i gone through uh, that book and i find that more than 69.67 percentage of uh, uh, low back pain is related to depression and this is a very wonderful study it is not the sample was very high the study was uh and it is the in the probably it's the first or second article of uh lancet so depression is very much related to your arthritic pain and you know the term the concept a somatoform disorders the somatoform disorders these are these are very very important one this with the somatoform disorders we can uh this depression we can correlate with the arthritis and the depression i will go later on with the somatoform disorders autoimmune diseases homeopathic autoimmune diseases homeopathic approaches is very important cause behind the cause very important playing with emotions so 
Uh, we know the markets of the autoimmune diseases. What are the markets? We can diagnose. Okay, you have autoimmune diseases. You have SLE. You have dermatomyositis. You, you have polymyositis. You have mixed tissue connective disorders. You have overlap. But whenever we have to think of homeopathic approaches, then what, what was the most important part to develop autoimmune disease? Why our immune system uh, trigger up? Why our immune system is so active, so active? What was the cause behind it? Who triggered this hyperactive immune state? It, whether it may be due to massive vaccination, whether it may be due to your lifestyle, whether it may be due to your food habit, whether it may be due to your massive drugging, that is the iatrogenic causes, whether this is massive suppression of your genetic expression, even the genetic expression is in right now is in crisis. So by very many medicines or uh, very many things can cause the in the alteration of the expression of circumstances the all the factors is the influenced to produce to develop the disease in the background of the evolution of the disease multiple factors are very very take very massive roles well, there are very many factors so these factors these may be very mechanical factors these may be very countable factors these may be very measurable factors but these also may be dynamic factors these also cannot be measured, can only be perceived. That those are the artistic part. And you can't deny those artistic part. Your science never say to deny the artistic part because the science and the art, it is the just like coin, head and tail. So the artistic expression of the artistic part is very much important also to understand the science. This is the message of today's my topic that not only we should confine to our dynamic pathology we should take care of the all all uh, materialistic causes all the materialistic remembering metria medica it is the integration part of organ metria medica philosophy clinical medicine etc so the playing with emotions these are very important part of autoimmune part which you should take care of there are so so much keen physical observation in relation to homeopathy uh there are serrated teeth a shiny nose we know these are in uh, dr nanda is here he he can tell very many medicine uh it is not only in phosphorus i know he will tell more than five six medicines but usually i am just giving it examples here like yellow teeth lycopodium suja basilinum but you know teeth is this type of yellow teeth which cannot be cleaned, which cannot be kept clean. This yellowness of the teeth was very prevalent uh, more than 50 years ago due to some modern medicine and given due to some anti uh, for like antibiotic or for tuberculosis treatment or for uh, antibacterial treatment and the yellow teeth are very common. But right now it is not very common. But the, uh, the that diathesis that is now it can remain so uh, large leaves of bacillum, small jaw of calliard, warts on eyebrows, suja. These are the keen physical observation relation to homeopathy. I will come later on in detail of that uh, in the later slide. So these are the part of clinical medicine and metria medica. We can think of anacardium. We can think of, you can, you can remember the symptoms of anacardium that I am under dazed, I am, I am under any superior power, someone is falling from the grave, or very many, Dr. Kishore is here, he is the HOD of my College of Metro Medica, Dr. Nanda is very renowned Metro Medica professor. But I, I, if I am not wrong, the anacardium symptom is, mind symptom is there. And if a man from clinical medicine, if we know the conditions of neurocephalus, and under neurocephalus there is one GPI, general paralysis of insane, if we go through line by line of general paralysis of insane, there are so many symptoms resembling these anacardium symptoms. So it is not that all the patients of GPI require anacardium. 
but in the science behind it that the anacardium part as because anacardium is very much anacardium what anacardium has two variety one variety of anacardium has got its syphilitic part very predominant very predominant at syphilis you know the primary stage secondary stage tertiary stage in the tertiary stage it goes to the all the parts the heart brain etc so anacardium can produce this type of symptom this is the gravity of the anacardium to produce this type of symptom so the if the patient is of anacardium with the loss of memory if the patient is of anacardium with his mental conditions with his skin with his plugging sensation we should give anacardium to the patient of gpi it is not that only you give gpi on the basis of one symptom the minimum three physical uh, level and mental level we need minimum three symptoms to make the totality like aconite all the symptoms of anxiety neurosis if we go through and if you go through the mental sphere of aconitum napellus there are so many so many similarity so anxiety neurosis all the patients of anxiety neurosis is not of aconite you can you can feel the difference of patients in anxiety neurosis one patient having anxiety neurosis is talking like aconite and another patient having anxiety neurosis is talking nothing but he is talking i will die uh, nothing no one can save me and he is also very much anxious so it's another type of variety there are multiple varieties so anxiety neurosis like these are the clinical medicine pattern these are the metria medica pattern cardiac asthma we can think of epicac epicac you know the epicac with the very rattling sound of chest and whenever we say anything rattling sound of chest we think of bronchitis we think of bronchopneumonia we think of rattling chest wheezing chest of the child in respiratory field but we never think of cardiac asthma in the same field because in the cardiac asthma in the left ventricular failure the patient even have the rattling of chest we know the four point of uh, left heart failure we know the uh, very high blood pressure with the paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea pnd with the uh, with the very uh, we we can think of the tic tac rhythm and we tick of left ventricular failure and the bilateral basal crepitation a very important part of bilateral basal crepitations in left ventricular failure in epicacuana is one type of medicine which can produce the symptoms of the symptoms of this rattling chest that rattling chest may be found in all respiratory diseases but also found in cardiac diseases even the cardiac elements like left ventricular failure stage left ventricular failure stage when you will get the uh, uh summation gallop you will get the gallop rhythm even if, uh, this is the very important part the pulses alternance and you are finding the patient with the clean tongue with the clean tongue because no gastric problem the patient having rattling chest having no gastric problem but but having rattling with clean tongue, tongue. so epicac may be one of the very useful drug if indicated in left ventricular failure we may think of arsenic whenever patient lies there is shortness of breath sob is there dyspnea is there the time 12 to 2 it is the usual lying time in noon or night so usually paroxysmal nocturnal and dyspnea is very common to left ventricular failure and it is the pathological symptoms of that disease which is found in arsenic so if you give on this basis arsenic then arsenic will be only pathological one if the patient having that anxiety of arsenic that fear of death of arsenic that thirst of arsenic then you give arsenic then that arsenic will not be pathological one but it is it is my experience that if the disease which ever occur in any patient that occur on depending on the individuality of the patient depending on the accessory circumstances on epigenetics of the patient depending depending on the multiple factors which can cause a very congenial environment to make the disease in particular that individual so it comes automatically in the arsenic constitution this type will happen in arsenic constitution usually the very big uh, uh, pedal swelling very arthritis pain so much usually not happen i am not talking that arsenic will you will not prescribe in arthritis in many cases if the patient is of arthritis we can give but in the sphere of action arsenic can give uh, rise the symptoms of this type of 
uh, respiratory system, cardiovascular blood system, even the failure system. As because failure, so there is dropsy, the very old term dropsy, anasarca, whole body fluid. Because patient is in multiple organ failures. So arsenic is very, very well indicated in those conditions. The lacus is pseudobulbar palsy. Whenever there you you cannot you can you you your deglutition your very much but it is tough whenever you are taking any liquid but whenever it is solid it is okay so to us are it is very uncommon peculiar he is uh, feeling pain for the water but not feeling pain for the solid food this is a very common to see the palsy because he has not sensation so it, whenever it will touch the solid food it touch then he he knows that something uh, it is going so pseudobarbar palsy is a common symptom of any not only lachesis, it prevails to many, many snake poisons. Like bradycardia of gelsemia, the slow pulse of old age, it is written in one Metrobadica book. So it is very common that the old age person will have slow pulse. Very physiological. The patient having very old and having very tachycardia, then something wrong is in there. But gelsemium can produce these symptoms. Also, we have to remember the gelsemium may be a very good drug of hypothyroidism where bradycardia is one of the most important part. You go through the ignatia. You go through the ignatia. The very sadness, very depression, always the something is deglutition like that. There's a, uh, I can say, historical, historical, globus historical type, epica, uh, so not epica, ignatia. The same gelsemium. They will give you a lot of hypothyroidism symptoms and as because the symptoms, the hypothyroidism disease, hypothyroidism disease during the Metriomedica source books time was not prevalent. Hyperthyroidism was prevalent. So many symptoms of hyperthyroidism. But unknowingly, the prover proved very many symptoms of hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, which can be prevalent. I can give you only one or two examples because time is very short, like gelsemium, like ignatia. You, you see the hypothyroidism patient. You see the depression. You see the shyness, you see the everything of hypothyroidism, everything slow, and you think of your gelsemium, you think of ignatia, you think of all other metrometrical drugs depending on this. You should not think on the basis of hypothyroidism. You should think on the basis of your metrometrica, the anemia of natural mule, very common. The hyperkinetic circulatory strain, it is the pivot of pathology of iron deficiency anemia. As because patient having anemia, deficiency of iron so the everything will be the heart will pump much more so hyperdynamic circulatory state and the patient will feeling everything there is something like belladonna and everything the peristaltic movement is much more and even that symptoms that anemic symptoms that heart symptoms palpitation that is the very common symptoms to natural mu fluttering sensation of the heart in the whole body even even the sleeping tachycardia like hyperthyroidism. Natramur is the producer of many symptoms of thyrotoxicosis also. The sleeping tachycardia can be found in natramur. But only on the basis of that, we cannot give the natramur. Our scientificity of application of these natramur lying behind these, that the patient must be of natramur. Patient having the affinity for salt. You can say all the Bengal people have affinity for salt and fish. All the Bengal, Odisha. They have affinity for fish and salt. All the Muslims have the affinities for meat, maximum. But these are the commons. But the patient having the cravings, not only the desires, and the natram mute, the typical being to be influenced, easily influenced, these are the mentally typical of natram mute, will guide you to select the medicine in anemia. You can give in the patient anemia, iron deficiency anemia, natural mule, but that should not be on the pathological basis without any constitutional symptoms. That is our artistic concept. That is our motto. The, our junior doctors, they should know, they should know the depth of knowing the, un, the constitutional symptoms of the metriomatica, the depth, the gravity of the characteristic symptoms of the natural mule. We should not deny it. We should not uh, give it on the basis of the therapeutics only because otherwise in the therapeutics there will be only one medicine each, behind each uh, disease there are so many remedies in the therapeutics under one disease name we have to differentiate with the characteristics so it depends the patient to patient and you can say
then there will be in any condition from aconite to zinc gum, anything can be given. Yes, it can be given, but the sphere of action, the constitution of the, the characteristic of the, the symptoms of the Metro Medica, that will restrict something that these diseases may be happen. The sphere of action cannot be all. It may be all, very rare, but really like natramute, it has got affinity to the uh, blood system, to our blood, to our hemopoietic system. It may be a very good drug in the thalassemia. I have in lot of cases in the I am it is not natural will cure your thalassemia, but the timings of the blood transfusion will be much more in the beta case of thalassemia. And if you think of natural if the patient is or not in very grave disease, very many even the uh, very grave situations of blood bleeding disorders can be tackled by natramur. Not only the bleeding disorders, natramur in severe cardiovascular diseases also, natramur may be a choice. Like benign enlargement of prostate. We know there are so many medicines we used in BEP from Solidago to uh, all, all the, uh, even the common people, they know the name of some medicine for uh, prostate enlargement. They usually take several serotonin like that. But we should think that the only single symptom of hypersulfur in BEP that the urine forces dribble. It is it is very uh, the force is not like projectile. The force the urine it is dribble, it dribbles and it drop by drop. So the force is very very less and it is the maybe the symptom of prostatitis. So hypersulfur calcarium may be also producer of symptoms of benign enlargement of prostate or prostatitis. So if the patient is of like hypersulfur, like impulsive, very chilly, grape sour, and with the typical uh, smell of hypersulfur, we can think of an antisoric with the syphilitic base. We can think of hypersulfur. There are so many things like tuberculosis, the phosphorus, the diffusing capacity. We are, we know this is, this is, we usually say the uh, physiology, the uh, philosophy of disease, the tuberculosis. The tuberculosis can be in anywhere. It is not only confined to your lungs. The tuberculosis of gut, the dowy feeling of intestinal tuberculosis, the tuberculosis of the skin, tuberculosis. So whenever the, these mycobacterium tuberculosis just taking entry, but it can prevail, it can uh, influence, it can infiltrate throughout the body. Not just like phosphorus, because phosphorus is also very good anti-tubercular drug. But you think the characteristic of phosphorus, rightly said by Dr. Vitulkas, the diffusing capacity. This is a so wonderful description just by one line, the diffusing capacity of phosphorus. That jahan bhi jata hai, chha jata hai. So just, uh, it is very wonderful. And you can, uh, the constitution of phosphorus give you the indications to this tubercular type. I, I never believe in tubercular myosin. I believe in sorosyphilis psychosis. I, I know the tubercular diathesis. I have seen the books of first edition, second edition of clinical medicine, where it is written under tuberculosis. There, there will be very offensive smell of tuberculosis patient. There will be big, big eyelashes of the tuberculosis patient. The patient mentality, the mind to go around, to go around travel, even it is written in clinical medicine book. Now, with the time of changing time, changing context from the clinical medicine to evidence-based medicine. Now, tuberculosis is confined only to low-graded fever, uh, uh, very sweating, night sweating, drenching night sweat, chronic cough, and your chest X-ray peer view, the GONS focus, the ELISA test for COX, and all other investigations constricted you to tuberculosis. But the classical symptoms of clinical eyes of tuberculosis now is in oblivion in clinical medicine older books. Now it can be seen in the diathesis of the tubercular diathesis. Through the, we can explain that tubercular stigma now prevail from one gene to another gene, even after third generation, fourth generation, without history of any active tubercular lesion, we can think, we can see the tubercular stigma in the third generation, fourth generation. So it is the diathesis. It is the diathesis, this concept. So we can't forget the big eyes of tuberculosis. We have the right now in the OPD, the tubercular mother with the tubercular baby and the tubercular mother having 
having some mitral valve problem and we give anti stimulating medicine with the 50 millisiemal LM potency well since long still she is under our uh, medications but uh, she is improving even the last report also is telling that so uh, very very important change in the diameter of the mitral stenosis and she is improving and she uh, the, her baby also with the tubercular mother gives rise to tubercular baby just by seeing the baby we can think of the tubercular or by seeing the tubercular mother we can think of tubercular baby this is the artistic perception artistic conception lies behind the science we cannot deny the tuberculosis but what is the stigma how it going from one generation to one generation how can it be identified by our philosophy that is our science that is our science so uh, for like learning disability or causticum, the causticum you will find the one uh, very common rubric that is mistakes, mistakes and uh, omits the word, the letter with it. So it's a LD, the causticum is a very good anti-soric uh, drug, and the learning disability is the basically it is uh, sora in behind it is sora. So learning disability is causticum. Uh, I am not talking that you will give causticum to all learning disability. But on the basis of constitutional pictures of three or four symptoms characteristic of causticum, we can think of learning disability. Parkinsonism in Mercurius, in the last line of the Allen's keynote, paralysis agitans. The mercury, if you go through the mercury poisoning symptoms, and we can think of these paralysis agitans, Parkinsonism, and the pathogenesis of the Parkinsonism, this is clear that why Mercurius can produce this type of symptom. But on the basis of that, we cannot give Mercurius uh, on all the Parkinsonism patient. It is not like syndopa. You will give syndopa to Parkinsonism all. It is not like that. The patient will have to mercurius. Then we have we can think of Parkinsonism. ADA is due to drosera. We are all well aware about the drosera, the hooping cup, the typical tubercular constitution of drosera with the TB from Margaret Tyler, M. Tyler books to uh, uh, drosera. You can we have an idea of drosera in tuberculosis. Even it is not only confined in whooping cough, it is a very good drug for chronic tuberculosis. But you think of the attention deficit hyperactive disorders child. You they they have no eye contact. They are very their pace, they are very, very always running, always running. So the tubercular activities, whenever it is suppressed in any form, it may be suppressed, it may not be it may be. I should not I should not say palliate because palliate is only can cause palliation for several months or years, but ultimately it it reappears. But suppression can cause deviation from one state to another. So I must say it suppression. So suppression of tuberculosis may come in another form. May come in another form. But you are giving, you are giving, we are trying. If we I are just taking the reference of uh, uh Stuart Close toward close philosophy that we are trying to kill the tuberculosis we are trying to kill the bacteria of tuberculosis homeopathic medicine cannot kill tubercular tubercular germ we, we don't think like that or our path is not like that but whenever these the all the other pathies they used to kill the germ and whenever the, the germ cannot be killed till date the tuberculosis is one type of disease which can be observed in the cave paintings of the earlier and till that it is prevailing with all the part we are taking but it cannot be eradicated like everything like tuberculosis if it is eradicated it may be suppressed in it may be deviated or suppressed in another form or it may remain in the diathesis part or it may remain as miasmatic stigma this is our concept this is our concept nowadays tuberculosis is very much uh, uh decreasing 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 with the development of the country developing country developed country all others there are no uh, tuberculosis but the other part the child becoming very hyperactive the child's behavior is like tubercular activities infiltrating to all which we should think of these are the thinking these are the our concept so the drosera drug is the very effective in this type of tubercular activities this type of ADHD patient, even not only calcrea carb, if we go through calcrea carb from very many source books, calcrea carb is not only like varieta carb, very sloth and very fatty, flabby, only lying down. Calcrea carb is also very active. Calcrea carb also is so active that whenever it 
the performance work it performs in a phase and in that phase he is the number one but then again he become very lazy so these are the one uh, so uh, stroke in arnika so very well when she is whenever he is asked how are you i am well so this is the very common common symptom very common symptom like vitiligo like uh, the brownia can produce one round one round small uh, part in the uh, in the cheek it is a very common thing of it may be a form of pityriasis it may be a form of vitiligo so brownia can produce this symptoms so the most important part what is to be cured in the disease so we have to know the knowledge of medicines and we have to know the knowledge of the indications uh, so all living beings have a history living structure is always a record of prior development so we have to think of anamnesis of the disease from homeopathic point of view the cause of the cause the anamnesis of homeopathy we have to nature versus nurture how we have nurtured in this nature this is very important and the epigenetic network which is not only epi epi means it, nowadays epigenetic is the very very burning topics extends to level beyond genes it is like our accessory circumstances anything which can influence the development of the disease so it uh, the one example is ibs ibs never happen without any emotional turmoil or without any continuous maintaining cause everything you can find in ibs with the mind body interaction so somatization is very much important part of this irritable bowel disease with the alternate change of, of bowel habit there are so many things from ibs to malabsorption syndrome even to aids and we can think of our phosphorus when it is written that it is a very good drug for chronic for old patients having chronic diarrhea so we must think we must think that phosphorus can produce this type of symptoms so our approach is a serodegative swandalo arthropathy whenever you are getting nothing no pathology is there you are getting nothing but patient is complaining of you some type of arthritis we should think of serodegative swandalo arthropathy and under that there are so many disease which may be give you positive or negative but patient will give you symptom even you can see arthropathy with ulcerative colitis arthropathy with crohn's disease even unclassifiable chronic heel pains nowadays these are very common chronic heel pains it may be due to your shoe it may be due to your walking posture but it may be due to your first part point of autoimmune disorders we should think of like that Uh, extraarticular manifestations of seronegative spondylo arthropathy even the costochondral arthritis costochondral joint arthritis it may be due to fibromyalgia it may be due to hypothyroid hypothyroidism it may be due to intercostal rheumatism tit syndrome it may be due to aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so the differentiating we are differentiating with the scientific background but we are applying it from our philosophical point of view whenever we are applying medicine these are very important so these are the to know the road ahead i i this slide i uh, acknowledge to dr chaturbhuj naik sir uh, i can remember this slide from to know the road ahead as those coming back this is the chinese proverb so from the experience i have known i have seen the tuberculum aviary to use it in the patient of tubercular diathesis but having very feeble very feeble constitution or you cannot prescribe tuberculinum or bacillinum like very grave medicine in any form you can think of tuberculinum aviary though it was very abused in different type of influenza if it is indicated you give it otherwise it is not it is uh, my learned guru dr jwardar i have uh, seen uh, these uh, applications the artistic application of aviary from his chamber the costicum i already told it the drosera already i mentioned and uh, like under these cases the alopecia the use of ustilago in alopecia we usually it is in the very patchy alopecia if we think of diffuse alopecia usually we have to think of very chronic uh, long standing treatment of chronic whether it will give you advantage or disadvantage i have no idea but the uh, alopecia ustilago uh, we can think of like i i i must uh, restrict myself Uh, to i just one or two point i must conclude that ethusa in cerebral palsy patient we we go through the cerebral palsy the ethusa synapium there are vomiting etc in ethusa synapium but 
the one line EDOC incapacity to do, think the if we go through the cerebral palsy patient ethusa has the capacity to develop the symptoms of cerebral palsy the very important word it is not that by giving ethusa you will cure cerebral palsy but the, to understand the patient to know the patient to know the gravity of the symptoms we can think of ethusa the patient of cerebral palsy uh, giving you indications much more uh, which is very much resembling with ethusa that is the most important part So all knowledge is good, but the knowledge that makes a real physician is the knowledge of how to cure. That is the uh, Barnett concept. I will not rest to this is the cervical spondylosis. Cervical spondylosis in whole vertebral spine, the cervical and lumbosacral region are to be considered as main point with making human straight. So any type of insult or any type of humiliation, most important emotional positive factors, this can cause the disturbance in that so somatically the influence of these emotional conflict representing the complaints of the above observed area ultimately the cervical spondylosis lumbar spondylosis i i am just trying to establish my concept that the emotional conflict is very very important one so you can see that medicine semicifuga also cronium mac the pathological uh, medical like paris quadrifolia but we should not forget the semicifuga with the uterine origin we should not forget the typical constitution of cronium mac uh, you can see the reactive arthritis after COVID-19 infection, the axial spondyloarthritis of pandemic phase. These are very in rise. Palindromic rheumatism, etiology of RF factors, smoking is the most important part, is the latest one. And the last one, the microbiome. Both gut and oral microbiome is the very important one, the growing importance of microbiota in the development of RA. And do you think this is the paper of 2021 and 22 and I can remember one paper from uh, Avin Chandra College of Odisha Government College. They have worked a lot in the bowel nosod on the with the rheumatoid arthritis. So just we have to think of our power that we have the medicine of bowel nosod. We can think of this. Our research work can be like this. So we have all the weapons. The Human Genome Project now it, it is it is recent development in biology. But the people with genetic predisposition, they are very much vulnerable to very much disease. So the research suggests that homeopaths who can explain the concept of biasm as acquired disease tendencies to scientists outside their field may know, find epigenetics research collaborates open to accepting the concept of miasmatic influences on health. So in fact, genomics and epigenetic symptom and multivariate based research methods may be one route by which homeopathy can attract much greater scientific consideration. This is very important one. So from the man in health to man in disease with the multiple factors, uh, the time is very constant. This is the fatty liver from free fatty acid to very low density lipid, but multiple factors. If the patient is taking much more fat, so, so there may be cholesterolemia. Whenever there is no phosphorylation, there is less, less choline and methionine from the diet. So there may be hypercholesterolemia. Anyone is taking very much alcohol, so triglyceride will be high because alpha glyceroposphate, the enzyme will be much more active in the alcohol. So there will be fatty liver. If there is coupling uh, within the protein and the triglyceride, bonding is something is wrong is there, then the liver is itself damaged. So there is fatty liver. So multiple causes with these and the multiple factors, we have to take care of all those things. Uh, like this, the homeopathy in so-called surgical disease, we have the bridge presentation. Surgery means refer, surgery means cutting, but we, surgery means cut, definite, our BHMS for surgery, but but we we should know the surgery patient. We should know the anal fistula with the tubercular diathesis. We should perceive that without the tubercular diathesis, usually anal fistula never happen from dynamic point of view. With the anal fissure and phimosis, we should know the syphilitic stigma of the patient. This is the syphilitic, the typical tongue and with the development of the typical growth of the psychosyphilitic, the typical psychosyphilitic gynecological surgical disease of, of the tube ovarian mass, torsion cyst, ovarian cyst, all, everything has got its individualization presentation, individualization, red eye of ophthalmology. It is not only the red eye of inflammation of the uh, conjunctivitis, it may be the systematic manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis. So the systematic manifestation, the emotional turmoil, these are the parts. So paradigm shift in homeopathy, sound based of clinical medicine with random use of clinical tools and practice with IT boom, fundamental of research activities and its application in applied from 
homeogenomics, epigenetics, these are the paradigm shift. Homeopathic specialties in practice of medicine, keeping the fundamentals intact. Homeopathic education technology, research based on homeopathic oriented scale, survey, questionnaire, design protocol, new techniques with international recognition. But based on homeopathic fundamentals, never ignore the homeopathic fundamentals. So medicine from genetics to epigenetics, organon have gone through life phase during COVID. Practice now must be patient centered, customized and research based on recent observation during pandemic phase. So homeopathic oriented clinical medicine is a real integrated system of medicine to apply in practice, not the medicine and therapeutics and homeophilosophy in three different compartments. This is the real integration and applied statistics and research methodologies in lieu of basics of homeopathy. You should not fit homeopathy with the statistics and, and all the research methodology. Rather, statistics and research methodology can be applied on the lieu of the basics of uh, organum basics of homeopathic philosophy that may be the one research that how we develop the tools of research within keeping the fundamentals intact these are the very unique one we have to search out and i have confidence that our organization our research organization will do that with this uh, uh you in very many points you may agree with me or may not disagree but again, I, am, I, I convey my thanks to the associations, to the NINAH alumni associations, and to all my esteemed uh, 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 speakers, my uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. L.K. Nanda sir, and uh, also to uh, Dr. Kishore Kumar Noshkar, co-chairman and chairman sir, Dr. Kollani. Uh, I, I conclude here. Uh, thank you. If any question, anyone, then can ask me at my gmail doctor dot roger at gmail dot thank you thank you thank you sir for your uh, excellent presentation sir uh, really we are enriched by this presentation. Now I can invite uh, Professor Dr. Ilke Nanda sir, please uh, uh, provide your views, sir. Good evening to everybody. <clears throat> Dear inaugurator, Professor Naskarji, erudite speaker, Professor Rajat Chakrapadhyay, my dear organizers, Dr. Vidyut Mukherjee, Dr. Kalyani, and other <coughs> organizers present in the webinar, and the learned, learned participants listening to the webinar. The deliberation made by Professor Rajat Chakrapadhyay Today is very, as we all know, we listen, a very educative, informative, useful, and didactic. I, why I use the word didactic? Because many new, new concepts he involved in his deliberation. I will go one by one to his uh, deliberations. So in brief, uh, I started my comments. Successful prescribing stands upon three main factors, like three legs of a tool, knowledge of clinical medicine, the true application and principles of homeopathic prescribing, and homeopathic principles. So thanks to organizers for selecting such an useful topic, which will definitely upgrade, update, Elevate the knowledge of our doctors. Dr. Rajaji covered almost all points. He left no stone as regards the topic, starting from the etiological aspect of the disease, sequel, role of sequel in the prescription, nature's law, physician patient relationship. To make a perfect diagnosis, a keen observation, sound sense, common sense, 
and very meticulous points on joint pain, autoimmune disease, totality of symptom, physical stature of the patient, and uh, even regarding this uh, anacardium personality, hypersulfur for B, B, very, very new concepts he to, to delivered. And I think the participants, the listeners are very much benefited. So to come to the point, to come to my last few uh, discussion points, homeopathy, as we know, treats the organism as a whole and not the individual parts or some of its symptoms. Homeopathy aims at individualization of the patient and drug. Knowledge of clinical application of medicine while selecting the minimum though very essential but absolute dependence on these aspects may mislead the physician to select the minimum. I repeat again, absolute dependence on these aspects may mislead the physician to select the minimum. But at the same time, a role of clinical medicine has wide significance as told by Dr. Rajesh Chattopadhyay. The clinical medicine of today, confront us today, involve more than naming of the disease. That means in detail, clinical medicine is not now confined to the diagnosis or naming of the disease. They include more the more the useful factors such as clinical medicine, by going to clinical medicines, we will have knowledge on determination of etiological factors of disease, which plays immense role in selection of homeopathy medicine. As we know, etiology has a, has a tremendous role in selection of medicine, particularly mental etiologies, elements from grief, elements from financial worries, elements from, elements from grief, natural mure, causticum, ignatia, a lot of diseases. Elements from financial worries, elements from suppressed gift of Sagria, elements from uh, overexcitation and coffee. A lot of we know the reporter is full of put elements from that the etiology that plays a significant role, and that knowledge of etiology comes from clinical medicine while dealing a disease. These clinical medicines also include many other factors, such as determination determination of series of events that occur between the action of cause and their latest pathological lasers. I repeat again, causation, the causation initiating disease and the pathological changes are included in the clinical medicines, which indicates the dynamic or pathological changes of the disease to pathological stages, what he told. This helps to see how development disease matches with the sequence of occurrence of symptoms. We all know that while proving a drug, there is occurrence of symptoms occurs in every drug. So similarly, by knowing the clinical medicines, we can know the occurrence of disease from the pre-dynamic stage, dynamic stage, uh, develop, development of disease to pathological stage. So these stages are simulating with the sequential occurrence of symptoms improving, which is a great boon to us to come to match the sequential occurrence of medicine, sequential occurrence of symptoms improving to match with the sequential development of a disease. I will give an example here that if you go to acid first, in acid first, the first symptom occurs is the tremendous weakness followed by indifference, followed by Profit urination followed by body ache. So you see, SFS is a symptom of, is a drug for diabetes. And you see, development of diabetes in the pre dynamic stage is weakness without any, say, blood sugar high, without any, any manifestation pathologically. A diabetic, pre diabetic patient feels very weak, which is a symptom found in SFS before coming any other pathological states. So likewise, uh, the improving Baptisia produces symptoms in, in a very, very slow way, insidious way. So a lot of sequential occurrence symptoms of a drug. You can match perfectly with the 
to be uh, the progress of a disease by clinical medicine knowledge it is a great match and can we can cure the disease <clears throat> third point the by knowing the clinical medicines we can know the reaction or susceptible to the patient to, uh, patient as a whole and how it acts the stimulus and this will give us the miasmatic state of the patient i will give an example here that now during the last covid 19 when the covid attacks persons some persons who have belonging to soric myism they got covid and cured rapidly some persons having psychotic myism they got covid didn't cure but passes to a pathological pneumonia pneumonic stage that is consolidation some covid patients directly within 3 4 days passes to damage of lungs which is which are belonging to syphilitic myism so this knowledge comes to us from clinical medicine the pace the uh, pathology of covid and how it how it matches to our miasmatic state in our body so similarly <clears throat> by knowing the uh, clinical medicines we can know the uh, how can how to select a medicine so while selecting a medicine, we all emphasize on causation, physiognomy of the patient, tempo of the patient and, and the medicine and disposition of the patient. I will give an example here that if you give aconite to typhoid state, usual not, not cure because the pace of aconite is very acute onset and it cures, it comes down quickly without any pathological changes. So if we prescribe aconite to the to a typhoid patient, may not work because the pace of action of aconite is not matching with the pace of typhoid stage. So this is this knowledge comes to us that always keep an eye over the pace or uh, uh, tempo of the remedy while giving a pace, remedy to the patient, how the symptoms develop with the patient. So likewise the spear fraction of disease I, I, from the knowledge of clinical medicine we can know what is the spear fraction in which spear this disease will prominent and basing on the spear fraction we have got a lot of medicine just I'll, i will just now tell you and uh, similarly uh, knowing the stage of disease advanced stage initial stage we can determine our medicines when new symptom arises they are disease, prog uh, disease there are disease progression or symptoms of action medicine this knowledge comes to us from clinical medicines that they that this uh, when giving a medicine they didn't act because or it is just palliate or acts for certain time because this covers the superficial symptoms of disease and this knowledge comes from clinical medicine even if symptoms matches at times uh, not curable that may be the superficial stage of disease and this knowledge comes to us from clinical medicines and most important is that with the sound knowledge of clinical medicine we can decide the basis of prescription a very very important point that if you have a sound knowledge on clinical medicine we can we can decide the basis of prescription as example patients are not coming all in dynamic stage they, some are coming in dynamic stage, some are coming to good totality, some are coming with advanced pathological state without any symptom, positive symptoms. So, basing on the presentation of the symptom, we have we, we can determine our uh, basis of execution. It may be depending upon life situation the patient, what Dr. Rajan just now told, life situation has a, uh, has a immense role, like a, uh, autoimmune disease told, and the cause behind cause is the uh, emotion. Similarly, life situation of the patient, you can prescribe the patient, you can base a prescription on life situation of the patient, totality of symptom, etiology, elements from miasmatic background, interpreted medicines, and in more advanced cases, you can prescribe, you can base a prescription, keynote, sphere action, etc. etc. And these knowledge are purely depends upon the clinical application, clinical knowledge of um, uh, clinical uh, clinical knowledge of the medicine this knowledge comes in which the clinical uh, medicine will tell us in which stage the patient is coming to us and uh, and what is the basis of prescription should we go for totality or life situation 
or in advanced cases, if some with some intercurrent, go to keynote and go for the uh, treatment of uh, uh, say one say disease the pattern. So I'll give you some examples that we know, we all know the life situation of the patient, uh, uh, like how to prescribe life situation. Doctor Rajachir, and I very correctly told that the case taking starts from the uh, uh, very uh, in terms of the patient to the clinic. As you know, <clears throat> the the disposition of patient can be known when the patient comes to clinic. The patient waiting in the waiting room and reading books is called a car. The patient telling the uh, uh, your attendant that time is precious, time is money, don't make me wait, sulfuric acid. So likewise, uh, uh, the ADHD student, ADHD student, I mean, children, they they play with the PCR in your in your clinic or the they play with the uh, with the videos in the clinic, etc. Hiding face behind mommy is where the car. So likewise, a lot of you can see from here in the in the waiting room, talki dekhab child, phosphorus child, bayatak of child, tarantula child, natrium child, sulfuric acid child. So likewise, you can see a lot of things from the observation room. That is, he rightly told that it is started from the rightly from the waiting room. Similarly, uh, you can have in the wild. Uh, uh, clinical medicine tells us uh, many things to be observed. The patient, uh, patient's hand is sweaty, calcarea curve. Patient inclines to hog you, phosphorus. Like a lot of things to be uh, to be observed. Patient sits crossed leg sepia. Patient sits with the arm folded in the chest, the, like a like a very egoistic person, platina, natrium. Likewise, uh, patient looks like a very friend to you, phosphorus. Patient uh, weepingly towards his pulse clap. So likewise, there's a lot of things you can observe in the observation room. And these things are we, we all know. I am not going to detail. I, I am just confining how clinical medicine helps us in uh, in uh, uh, reaching the basis of prescription. We know life situation. We all know totality. I need not go to detail of this. Total is very clear. If it is very clear, the you know, medicine is perfect and cure the case. We know how to go a management prescription. We, we know where to give intercurrent. So these all knowledge have come from clinical medicines, and we have to know detailed clinical medicines to know all these basis of prescription. I have just given an example that nowadays uh, Dr. Raghuji told that a lot of cases of cervical spondylosis, spondylitis, spondylithiasis, and carriage spondylitis, a lot of cases are coming to us. Okay, so many times it is uh, so advanced and uh, no symptoms are there. So I will just give you a few examples of uh, how clinical medicines helps us in diagnosing the disease. That is, suppose in MRI finding, if it is spinal nerve uh, root, C1 uh, cervical 1, 2, 3 is affected, then it affects the, uh, as for our clinical medicine knowledge, cervical uh, nerve root 1, 2, 3 supplies head and neck muscles. And we all know that pain in the nape, nape of neck extends to occiput kingdom solve. Similarly, cervical nerve root C3, C4 extends to uh, supplies pectoral muscles. And we all know that Paris quadrifoliate drug which is pain in the uh, neck extends to the chest. Similarly, pain, we know that uh, uh, cervical nerve root 5 supplies to shoulder. So when the pain in neck extends to shoulder, we have drops like left side extension, brownia, ranunculus bulbosus, right side extension, caliphos lycopodium. We also know that cervical nerve root 6, 7 extends to upper arm. So when left side, when the pain extends to left upper arm, lachesis, calmia, paris quadrifolia, when the pain extends to right upper arm, it is ferrumpic, solanum lycoporsico. So likewise, <clears throat> similarly, we all know that uh, when the in, in case of advanced uh, pathological cases like cancer, stricture esophagus, uh, all these cases, we know that in stricture esophagus, if nothing is available, casiputum alumina are best drugs. Tumora pyloric area uh, of stomach or nasogalum. Kent in his report also emphasized on abscess, cancer, caries, polyp, angina, bronchitis, emphysema. 
Kent called pathological general. He used the term pathological general. He also uh, goes beyond this totality and uh, his mental evaluation that he emphasized that when there is ascending paralysis like in, NM, in MND, motor neuron disease, Konaya may be thought of. When there is a gradual paralysis, Kostika may be thought of. When there is rapid emaciation with paralysis, Plumbo may be thought of. We have all knowledge that in this last COVID, when nothing, there is pneumonia, advanced pneumonia, advanced sequel of uh, lungs disease, and uh, <clears throat> nothing, uh, uh, nothing can be, no, no symptom could be elicited. Right. Uh, as per Mathematica, if you correlate with the clinical medicine, left lobe of lower lung, natrum salt, thyroid, and thibopulinum. Upper, upper uh, lobe of the left lung, pix liquida, sulfur, myritus. Upper lobe of right lung, like, uh, sorry, upper lobe of lower, uh, uh, right lobe of lower, right, lower, lower portion of the right lung, lycopodium, teldonium, calicar. And uh, uh, similarly, likewise, you will see a lot of uh, uh, medicines uh, that can prescribe depending upon MRI, X-ray, uh, CT scan, ultrasound. So why I tell telling this that we all know that uh, uh, the, this uh, totality uh, life situation are the best or the the the, the only way to achieve the similibum. One cannot go beyond that point that uh, to depend on this uh, uh, C1 affects uh, um, uh, occiput and give, give this syndrome solved. This is not a prescription at all. But as, as we have not just not discussed, basis of prescription is also important looking to the symptom of the patient, what he presented to us. He may come to us in a very later stage where we cannot deny. So there also we have to depend our uh, knowledge on this clinical medicine and from this knowledge of clinical medicine of X-ray, MRI, CT scan, say, um, say um, um, uh, almost all our modern modern technologies of diagnostic points uh, we can prescribe on those points. We have got the scope. We have, Mathematica is so vast. It has got a lot of scope to prescribe on these aspects. So we have, we have such a good armarium, such a good weapons in our homeopathy that we, if it is a dynamic pathology stage, it will, suppose it is already disease not started in the dynamic stage, the dynamic pathological stage, depending upon the constitution, myasmatic background we can prescribe. And that is similarly, if the, the patient is in the middle of the stage, not very advanced or not uh, already symptoms manifested, we can depend on totality. And all these knowledge is disease in which stage, the dynamic stage or developed stage or advanced stage. These knowledge are all comes to us from only clinical application of medicine. And uh, we have to uh, see what the basis of the prescription on, the, on this knowledge of clinical medicine. Unless we have a thorough knowledge on clinical medicines, we cannot prescribe um, effectively for all types of patients because the, the, all patients are not manifesting similar type of pathology. So uh, I will not much take much time. Dr. Rajaji has uh, told uh, everything in detail. So I have nothing more to add, add it. Simply, I have to told that clinical medicine even, even it has been accepted and con and also it is, it has also been uh, advocated by Kent, Nas and uh, even Hanneman. Uh, Nas in his uh, one of his writing wrote that <clears throat> both pathology and symptomatology are valuable and inseparable and neither can be excluded. But to conclude, uh, nothing can substitute Hanneman's principles of prescribing on totality of symptom, life situation, etc. In the absence of totality, all life situation, all essence of disease, essence of the medicine, the, these uh, uh, prescription depending upon the uh, uh, X-ray findings, uh, CT findings, etc. And uh, pure application of uh, clinical medicine, pure, I'm, I'm using your pure application of clinical medicine without adding the totality past history, family history, mathematical background, and presenting symptom. And purely depending upon this clinical symptom, 
it is not possible to have a uh, ideal cure as told by Hanuman in Aphorism 2. So, <clears throat> at the end, I will be feeling, if I will not congratulate Dr. Rajat for his perceptive, humility, educative, informative, enlightening deliberation, which will be very useful to the audience today listening to, the, to, to him. He has given from the very conservative outlook to the very advanced outlook and uh, uh, discussed everything in detail. I must thank all the organizers and participants for the endeavor to maintain this 73rd CME and taking so much of strain to maintain uh, homeopathic standard, to uplift the standard of our doctors, of our friends. And uh, once again, I thank to, the, to uh, Dr. Kalyani and Dr. Bidwiji and uh, our uh, inaugurator and, uh, uh, and last but not least to our participants uh, and listeners and uh, uh, Dr. Rajaji, who I, who was the hero of the uh, scene today. Thanking you all. Thanks. I conclude my lecture here. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Now, we have few questions which uh, Professor Rajot had already answered in the private chat, but uh, actually uh, I request uh, Professor Rajot. Uh, there are three questions which had been sent to uh, Rajot sir on your WhatsApp. If you can take up the questions and answer it live, please. Please unmute. You are muted, sir. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I have already made the comment in my personal, uh, in the comment section. The, uh, the bowel nose part is related to rheumatoid arthritis. And I think uh, Dr. Nanda sir can remember it was the, uh, probably it was the project of uh, Dr. Avin Chandra College. It is a EMR project, and the paper is in IGRH. One, if anyone can search, the paper is on Indian Journal of Research on IGRH, CCRH. The paper was there on bowel nosot and uh, our rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, Mr. Probin Mojumdar told uh, several questions regarding parietes, homogeneities, like lax, uh, forest classification. Forest classification, definitely forest classification of during endoscopy, what was in sparting, what was in oozing, this type of, on the basis of the endoscopic features, there are so many pathological features on the basis of diagnosis. We must diagnose because uh, homeopathy never says that without diagnosis, you treat the disease. We must diagnose the disease, but whenever we have to diagnose, then we should be a very good clinician. Then we have to diagnose the patient in that given situation during taking the case. So we have to diagnose twice. We have to diagnose from practice of medicine point of view. We have to diagnose from our homeopathic point of view. And uh, that, uh, Mr. Praveen Mojimdar, what questions he made, that is that can give clue in our totality. That what type of hemorrhage, what type of in what part of, and what type of hemorrhage, that is parting or oozing, that is also one of the characteristic parts. But we should not confine only on those pathological symptoms, but that those may be the point. And even in many cases, when any dynamic uh, symptom or dynamic pathology is not available, then we have to depend on all those pathological, whatever we are getting, even from the x-rays, even from the CT scans, even from the endoscopics, forest classification, what Mr. Praveen Mojimdha was talking, we can uh, include it in the totality of symptoms also. Those are also, it is It is not that anyone is saying that you have to ignore all the diagnostic clues. You have to ignore the uh, endoscopic, many, uh, whatever are giving the endoscopic symptoms because those are also clues. Those are also symptoms. Those are differentiation. What is lacking that even the, nowadays the surgery and practice of medicine also, they are differentiating the disease. It is not that only uh, ulcers, only, esophagus, only erosive gastritis. They are also differentiating into pneumonia, 
in, on the basis of the different bacteria. They are differentiating uh, into nine to ten varieties of pneumonia, nine to ten varieties of esophagitis, and giving the different different names with the diagnostic classification because the insurance is there in all the developed countries and in the name of the disease the insurance pattern develop. So these should be also burning issue to us when we the insurance all this pattern will also come to our in, uh, India. But what I am talking that in homeopathic prescription, whenever we have to prescribe the medicine, we should take consideration of that, but we should not give wholly emphasis only on the basis of that. We have to give more emphasization on the patient, on the given situation to diagnose the patient in that case with his past history, family history, etc. Uh, but uh, it is right that we have to diagnose any case uh, and then to diagnose the patient. And uh, all the other disease conditions, what he mentioned, that is the uh, lax less hill grade B, Barrett esophagitis. Uh, uh, I already mentioned about the forest spore. So these are all the pathological symptoms come from uh, during investigations or during diagnosing the case. So we can keep it as our clues. So to making the final metrometric selection, we can take help of or to make the totality, it may be one of the point, it may or may not be one of the point, but it may be one of the differentiating factors in the future. So that should be our, in our, uh, this is also one of our, one of our tool. We should not ignore it. These are the questions. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Rajot. Uh, now I'll request uh, our respected president, sir, Devnarayan Kalyani, sir, to conclude with his vote of thanks. And Orko, if you can kindly bring on screen uh, Professor Kishore Kumar Nashka. Over to you, Kalyan, sir. Thank you, Vidur. Hello. We are... Am I audible? Right, sir. Hello. You are audible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Uh, and uh, equally thanks to all the viewers on screen, out of screen. Especially, we are highly grateful. Well, I am very, very pleased and encouraged by presence of our senior Professor Dr. Intananda. We are really very, very grateful to him. And regarding Dr. Rajo Chatterjee, all of you know, one of the brilliant scholar of National History of Humanity Alumni Association, like Dr. Intananda, Dr. Peter Kumar Nashkar, same like them, brilliant scholar. We are really lucky that we got three pillars of homeopathy, three, three very uh, renowned scholars of alumni of National of Homeopathy in one scene. Anyway, all of us, we have enriched tremendously by excellent speech informations, as was described by Dr. Intananda, by the speech of, elaborate speech of Dr. Rajya Chattopadhyay. And that has been ornamented, elaborated further by Professor Intananda. I just like to conclude the session before that. What I have understood regarding this medicine and homeopathy, that is, medicine is a filter of homeopathy system of medicine or homeopathy substance. When you, got a, you get a case that is admixed by disease, ecological factors, Nice has hazards, life patterns, etc., etc., many other factors to create one patient. Now we have to select a drug by excluding the common indication. What we do exactly, to our knowledge, is we put the whole case history in a filter of medicine. That means we try to find out the common indications of the disease by diagnosis. We exclude the filtrate, then we are able to assess which was the exact picture of the substance of the patient after filtration. So medicine is such a subject, a homeopath rarely becomes successful without knowledge of medicine. That is why if we look after the future or the our previous followers, we will see that majority of the learned or great homeopathic doctors 
either they are allopathic doctors converted or they were have high knowledge of practitioner medicine to develop the knowledge of practitioner medicine not a matter of few days it begins from learning of anatomy physiology pathology then medicine so those who, who were highly concerned regarding these subjects paraclinical subjects starting from the very beginning they are bound to be expert in practitioner medicine but those few of us may not have that much of depth in practitioner medicine for them my suggestion is do not leave any patient undiagnosed get it diagnosed at any cost nowadays and mobile is everyone with everyone within a moment you can bring out the probable diagnosis and differential diagnosis by simply a simply by tip of your fingers from google or wikipedia there are different sources if we cannot at all there are some cases which are very possible may not be we may not be able to conclude the confirmed diagnosis we can send this thing to the person for a concerned person who is expert in this line get it diagnosed then your case will be very easy you will be able to assess what are the uncommon homeopathic individualistic characteristic symptoms are by expression or by the speech of dr rajesh chatterjee you have you have understood that there are many symptoms seems to be uncommon but if you consult if you consult the machine it will seem very common as i am telling and one example anacardia we were learning about anacardia a patient of patient complaining of complaints really by it it may be uncommon it may be common whether it is gastric ulcer or need no sir that should be sure otherwise we may have a false attack we may conclude that this anacardia really by eating food is uncommon symptom it may be common also if the tooth is abused or not so anyway this type of many there are many many symptoms where diagnosis is the must we have learned that nowadays insurance company legal obligations negligence of responsibility different type of rules are coming forward day by day gradually we have to we have to face the confirmed diagnosis in future we have to put it in our prescription so we should be highly concerned about the diagnosis practice of medicine and for this knowledge for the junior my request is do not neglect this subject that is anatomy physiology pathology if you want to be good may be a doctor this subject knowledge is very much essential to become strong in medicine so anyway today's seminar is a really brilliant everyone should record it everyone should be benefited <clears throat> that is the circulated go on we are having the record in youtube we are thankful to all especially the viewers on screen and house of screen or co for organizing this brilliant seminar as our best in editor to all our, our brilliant persons special dr ramanda dr chatterjee dr mukta and big good thank you very much we'll meet again and request to all the alumni to come forward with their experiences to share to enrich our knowledge i repeat i am telling that our system has developed by devotion by contribution of our masters so it is our responsibility moral responsibility to give our experience to all of us to enrich and to improve the whole system and we do so thank you very much for the day thank you very much good day thank you sir and with this we are returning back uh, to our backstage editor we'll be back again on 25th uh, of uh, june with another set of speakers and uh, moderator and inaugurators and thanks all uh, orko it's over to you